Hi, this is Denise Matthew, and welcome to episode 37 of the Mandala of Life, 365 Days to Self-Discovery. Today, we're moving away from logical collective energy back into abstract collective energy, away from answers and logical patterns for the future into the place where we truly experience what life actually means in this Maya. This is where we begin to see the mind-body connection that shows us the difference between thinking about life and actually living it. There's perseverance, commitment, and a willingness to stay within an experience until it's completed within this energy. This is where we allow our body to show us the way and our mind comes along for a ride. This is about the commitment to the form in the Maya. Today we're moving away from the Ajna and the fears that there might be chaos and crisis in the future. We're now moving into the sacral center, which is where we consider life begins and ends. This is life force energy that speaks to all the things that we do to maintain our life, our bodies, with the idea that our bodies know this Maya much better than our minds do. But unlike tribal energy that speaks to procreation, bonding, and all the things we need to do to continue humanity, this is abstract energy that talks about the experiences or the process of living a life. And all that endures after an experience is over is our memories. Ra Uruhu called this the most existential energy of the whole body graph because it's here in the abysmal where you truly drop into the experiences of life and all the sensations of being alive are discovered. But before we get into new content, let's briefly go over what we talked about in our last episode. In our last episode, we talked about the gate four and how it's logical energy that is always looking for an answer to the patterns of the future and also the formulas that will need to be tested, but may bring potential to give stability to the future. It's half of the 63 four channel. The gate 63 is a pressure that doubts the answer and the gate four tries to come up with an answer that alleviates the pressure and anxiety of the doubt. This is also an energy where we can have anxiety and mental stress over the questions that we have in our mind. We may want to answer questions or we may want answers to our questions. There's potential to blurt out answers that are not necessarily formed yet, but also a potential to accept whatever answers are given to you because you just want something to hold on to. This is just the beginning of the process of logic, which means it needs a lot of experimentation before the true answers can be realized. And if you want to find out more about the gate four, please check out episode 36 of the Mandala of Life. With that said, let's get into new content. And please don't forget to check out the other episodes of the Mandala of Life. If we move to the very basics of human design, and look at the difference between human design and astrology, we'll notice that astrology just has what would be considered a solar chart or the day you were born is the only chart that is used to quantify or to talk about who you are, your life purpose and all the places that you will potentially go in your future. With human design, we have a personality which is the day we were born. And we also have a design, which is 88 days or 88 degrees before we were born. Now, this is the difference between this system and many other systems, because we're talking about when the body was formed and how it looks different from when the mind was formed. It comes down to the crystals of consciousness, the design crystal, and also the personality crystal. Those are topics for another day. But what we need to talk about today is that we have a design and we also have a personality. We would consider the personality what we know about ourselves or what we think we know about ourselves. This is our mind. And when we talk about the design side of the body graph, we are talking about the actual body. Ra Uruhu called it the vehicle but we could also just call it the incarnation of this existence, the housing for our soul, the form that lives in the Maya. And if the Maya is made of form and the body is made of form, then the body should know how to maneuver and navigate the world and the Maya. And that's the main reason why we depend on the design and the strategy to lead us on the correct path for this trajectory in this life. The personality is meant to be the passenger or here for the ride, given this body, this gift, so that they can experience what it feels to be alive. 
and the gate 29, which is half of the channel 2946, talks about the body and how it is the house for the soul. And that though the mind gets a lot of play and replay, the body is truly living the experiences of our lives. This is the third gate of the quarter of duality, where purpose is fulfilled through bonding. The gate 29 is half of the channel of discovery, the 4629, where the gate 29 is the commitment and perseverance to being alive and to life, the gate 46 is considered the love of the body or the love of the flesh. Most times we talk about individual energy and how it's existential or in the now, but usually abstract energy is in the past. This energy, this channel is one of the outliers because this is about being in the now, being in the experience. This is about being within your body, experiencing everything that's happening truly being committed to the experience of what the body is actually feeling. Our minds don't have experiences, our bodies do. Our mind has a concept of what it feels like to be in a roller coaster ride, but our body feels all the feelings of what it actually is to be in a roller coaster ride and how you have the G-force pushing against you and how your eyes water from the wind that could be blowing in your face and how your hair flies out everywhere. This energy is about being within your body and experiencing life within your body. And when you are committed to being in your body within the experience, instead of being in your mind thinking about something else, which we oftentimes do, that's when you get in the flow of your life. The mind can tell you that you can't do something, but the body will oftentimes prove your mind wrong. Ra Uruhu described it as being in the flow of your life. His example was that if you're a child and you're just learning to swim, in the beginning you have anxiety, you have fear, you're scared you're going to sink, but eventually you allow yourself to drop into the experience and understand that you will float and the fear goes away. The mind tells you something different. It doesn't take into account that you actually can do something. And that's what we have to connect with when we get to this energy. This is truly accepting that the body knows so much. And when we allow our body to take us where we need to go, to put us on the trajectory of our life, to show us what's correct for us and what isn't, then that's when we can get in the flow of our life. And that is where the concept of being in the right place at the right time, when you are in the flow of your life, when you're allowing your body to do its thing, then you will naturally pick the right commitments for you and you'll be persistent and you will be in it until the end. But if we try to push against our body and what it's trying to tell us to work harder, to commit to more things, to allow the mind and the ambition to have a say in what our life is all about and to ignore what our body is telling us, that's when we can get into health concerns and health issues. And that is when we start to not give our best to the world or to get the best from the world because we are not aligning with our body. There is true magic within this energy, but only if we allow our body to have its place and also its say in this Maya. But since we're talking about the gate 29 today, let's talk about the hanging gate 29. When we hone in on the gate 29, we're talking about an energy that is always wanting to say yes. It's almost like there's this need to agree and to say yes to everything in life. Or at least that's how it can begin. Because when you carry the gate 29, it could be a natural instinct to want to say yes, to agree, to commit to something. But if you're young and you commit to things or you've decided to commit to things and you don't really commit to the correct things for you and you either can't come through on the commitment, you can't actually follow through on what you promised or alternately you just don't have what it takes to actually get to the end of it because you don't have the experience then you can be more jaded and more cautious about what you commit to later on in your life. Now, of course, saying yes to everything is not going to work for you, but neither is saying no to everything either. So there's balance required within this energy to get the best out of life and basically to be in the flow of life because ultimately that's where all the magic happens and that's where you reap 
the benefits that can happen with the energy of the gate 29 because there is luck within this energy there is serendipity and being in the right place at the right time because even though it's half of the channel of the 4629 it still has the electromagnetic that we're always getting that type of energy when we're out in the world so the quantum can be activated a lot and we can actually be in the right place getting the right experiences and having good luck just out of the blue but that's only going to happen if we're respecting what our body is telling us because there is as much as there's a deep connection with wanting to say yes to being persistent to being committed to life there's also this need to be committed to your body to understand that it has a say in this life just as much as your mind does what that means is that especially with this energy of the gate 29 and also the gate 46 is this concept that your body is always speaking and telling you what it needs and if you're not actually listening and you're ignoring what your body's telling you then what can happen is your body can eventually show you that it's not happy and that's usually with health issues or it could be with accidents or some way of stopping you from progressing in your life it's very prevalent with the energy of the gate 29 and also the 46 and also the full channel where most of us can just get a cold and it just means that we're a little run down it doesn't really mean much if you carry the energy of the gate 29 a cold or something that puts your health in a place where it's not perfectly aligned is a message to say that are you saying yes to the right things in your life it truly is your body telling you that you are in some way not listening or not following your true path in fact maybe your mind is pushing you to do and be something that is not actually aligning with your physicality and it can cause health issues that can really spring up and put you in a state of unwellness there's potential to burn out to have autoimmune issues even a sore throat can be an indication that potentially you're not saying yes to the right things in your life and this sounds unbelievable but if you have this energy and you are aligning with what is right for you the commitments that are right for you you will see that your life just gets easier because the gate 29 comes off the sacral center it means that instead of always saying yes when people ask you to do something or yes to commitments that sort of come really quickly it says wait for a minute decide if it's correct for you is it something that aligns with something that you want to do in your life or is it something that aligns with somebody else and it's not necessarily good for you but it's good for someone else those are the type of questions that you have to ask because ultimately because you have the energy of the gate 29 people will usually see you as somebody who they can ask to do things they can feel that energy that you're the type of person that will commit or do something for them whether you can actually follow through with the commitments that you make is not necessarily important when someone asks because they're expecting you to actually come through with what you say you will do and if you can't come through because you've actually committed yourself to so many things that it's not humanly possible to do it all then that's where it will be about you not being able to come through with your commitments and when that happens people will look at you in a different way and you might be vilified because you actually couldn't do what you said you could and you might have a very good excuse for why you couldn't make your commitment happen if it happens over and again you will get a certain reputation and people will look at you in a way of somebody who actually breaks promises and doesn't follow through which is not the type of energy that anybody wants to have in their life and there's also a deep magic within the gate 29 in that when you find that thing that makes your heart sing that thing that you want to put the commitment into there's a passion that opens up that can sort of allow you to do things that other people can't do it's this talent that blossoms that others don't have because it's the passion that kind of takes you to another place in how good you can become with a commitment that you've decided that is worth your while or a commitment that is aligned with who you are and it also talks to the idea that when you decide to do something or you make a commitment it's all about being 
completely in the experience because it's only when you are deeply within the experience or what we might consider dropping into the experience or in the abysmal because you drop into an experience and you don't really know what you're going to get only that you are going to fully immerse yourself within it to completely be enveloped by exactly what you get so that you will have that body memory of exactly what it felt like. This is half of a tantric channel, which talks to the idea of raising the frequency of energy. There's no mistake that many people who are spiritually evolved have this type of energy because it's about transmuting the energy from one thing to another. This energy says though life can have challenges and obstacles, it's also worth living. We're given a gift to be in this body, in this moment in time. And that's where we find the beauty of being alive. The beauty of being alive is deeply found within the gate 29. Because without the body that is exactly perfect for you, you wouldn't be able to experience the life that you experience now. And the more that you see the beauty of being alive, of being in form, and of being part of what we call the Maya, the more you will be on the trajectory of your life and in the flow of your life. This energy promises that you will get rewards, but it doesn't give you a timeline. It doesn't tell you exactly when the rewards will arrive. It just says, take one step after another. Keep moving through life. There will be obstacles. There will be things that will get in your way. There'll be trials. And there'll also be things that will make your heart sing because you'll be living a life that's worthwhile. When you're aligned to saying yes to the right things in your life, to being committed, to being alive, to living in this world, to seeing your body as a gift that you're given so that you can actually have an incarnation to experience life in all its trials and all its beauty, then the mandala of life turns again and we come to an energy of bonding. This is tribal energy. This is breaking barriers a design of being focused on reproduction. This is where intimacy and connection lives. Well, that's all for now, and I'll be back next week with episode 38, The Gate 59, The Gate of Sexuality. Until then, take care, and I'll see you again soon.